Hey everybody, this is Dream, and today we have a truck series uh, breakdown for NASCAR truck series. This is the UNOH 200 presented by Ohio Logistics. Uh, this particular race uh, is going to be uh, pretty short. You know, obviously it's a truck race, so they tend to be shorter. And so, uh, you know, your history here and the, your ability to move through the field and stuff like that and score fancy points is definitely going to be an advantage in this race. I do expect there to be some crashes and stuff, obviously, because it's a smaller track. Uh, so you do have to be aware of that, too. And I've tried to mention on the drivers I do like who have had a history sometimes of crashing. But uh, most of the drivers that I've picked for this race have had a really good, uh, have done really well at this track in the truck series, uh, specifically, and haven't crashed out many times. And if they have, then I will be mentioning that at least most of the time. So uh, overall, I think I have a pretty good set of drivers to choose from on this particular race. Uh, we do have some drivers that are uh, under the 8,333 line that we need, which those guys, you know, you got to have a couple of them at least in order to pay up for some other people. Um, and I will try to give you the best information I can about their potential based on where they might start. Obviously, the farther back you start when you're cheaper, the better because you get a lot of points for just maneuvering up through the field. And so I've tried to pick drivers that have had a history of doing that at this very track in the truck series. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the drivers themselves. Uh, I'm going to start top to bottom when it comes to salary and tell you my thoughts on those particular drivers that I picked that are going to be useful in this race. Now obviously, Nemechek, Zane Smith, and Corey Heim are the top three most expensive drivers. Unless any of them start outside the top ten, they're not going to be somebody that I'm going to take much of a look at. They both have, they all have a bad history at this particular track and haven't done very well. The first guy that I really like is Chandler Smith. Um, and two of the three starts he's uh, had, he's had really good finishes. Only one he didn't have where he had a wreck. But that, uh, but overall, he's been solid at the track and has had some really good finishes. So I think he's probably my favorite option in the upper uh, price range. And he's probably somebody you could start regardless of where he uh, starts the race. Uh, Grant Enfinger is another guy I really like in this at race. Uh, in four starts, he's had three over 40 fancy fancy points. And if he starts outside the top five, then he's definitely extremely use useful in this particular uh, race. Uh, the next guy I really like is Ben Rhodes. Now, Ben Rhodes has finished all the races he's been here. His finishes have not been as good as you would like. Um, um, and I do think he's somebody to worth taking a look at. But the reality is, is usually he doesn't beat his projections. So, like, if you think he's going to get... Like, I have him projected to get about 35 points. And if he gets below 35 points, then... Um, well, in most of the races here, he hasn't met that projection. Now, what I'll say is, is that if he has a farther back starting position, that gives him an advantage. A lot of times at this track, he's started up high in the race, and that's caused him to have difficulty to have maximum points. Uh, uh, Carson Hosever uh, is another guy I think is in a really good spot here. He's got top 10 potential. He can pretty much start wherever based on his price, and he should be okay. I think he has high potential to do well here, and he's been doing extremely well the last few weeks in the series as it is. Uh, then uh, we can look at Stuart Friesen um, for uh, the number 52 car, or truck or rather. Um, he has five, top 5 potential in this race, but he does need to start you know, at least behind 7th or 8th place to be uh, really worthwhile. But he has a good truck, and he'll, have, he'll be in the running to win the race as well, and so he's somebody you want to take a look at. At a pretty good price point, in fact. Um, then we have um, Parker Kligerman. Um, now, he doesn't run all the races, obviously, but he has top five truck p potential here. And he's been solid at this track in the past. Um, he has a lot of upside because most of the time he doesn't start real high in this particular track. Be aware, though, if he does start in the top five or something, then he's probably not somebody you want to use. But he definitely has a lot of upside because a lot of times he started outside the top 10, top 15 at this track specifically and he's always finished well uh then we want to look at uh crafton matt crafton for the number 88 um he's only useful in starts here if he's been outside the top 20 um he has finished to the top 15 a few times but he doesn't tend to get to the uh front all that much in this particular track i do think that his truck is not quite as good as some of the other drivers but overall at this track he has a history of finishing this race and being decent at it. So if he starts out outside 
of the top 20, then he's somebody that I think is almost a must-start. Um, then I have uh, guys that are below the 8,333 line. Uh, Matt Diabento, Diabento, sorry to butchering your name. Obviously, he doesn't have the best truck, but he's been doing pretty good at this track. He didn't have a track ra truck race at the track before, but he was always really good at this track in the other series. And so I don't think that he's going to have too much problem, especially if he starts in the back half of the field and maneuvering up. Um, he tends to, you know, be in the 15, 10 to 15 range when it comes to finishes. So I expect him to get into that uh, that range as well. Um, then Tanner Gray is somebody I think is somebody worth taking a look at. Let's see if I can find him here. Um, he has pretty good upside at this track. He's only had one bad race where he crashed out here, but in the other few races, he was in the top 15. And so, actually, top 13. So, if he can get another top, you know, 13 to 15 finish, he's likely not going to start super high up either. If he starts outside the top 20, then I'd definitely probably utilize him. And if he starts in the top 15, then he's somebody you can consider. Uh, then, uh, let's see, I've got uh, Kobe Howard. Um, now, he's obviously somebody that I don't typically look at, but he's been pretty good at this track. And so, he's had... Um, his worst finish was uh, 21st in three starts. And every start that he had here was uh, 30 fantasy point day or better. And so, for these lower, cheaper guys, getting 30, 30 fantasy points out of them is very going to be useful. He does have some upside where he could, you know, scratch into the 40 or 45 range. So uh, he's somebody to take a look at at the specific track. Um, then I have uh, Austin Wayne Self uh, for uh, the number 22 car or truck. Sorry, I keep saying car. Uh, he has a projection, uh, in, th in three, he has beaten the projection that he has in three of the four truck races at this track, and both, uh, uh, all three of them averaging 35 fantasy points or better. Um, he has upside, you know, the farther back he starts, and I would expect him to probably start outside the top 20, which definitely gives him some upside here at this particular track, and his price is nice and forgiving too. Uh, then uh, a guy that I don't think I've ever mentioned in a video before is Timmy Hill. Um, Timmy Hill, he, he does have the expectation that he's probably going to start at the very back of the track, a pack. That's the only way that I would say he's useful if he's, you know, in the la in the bottom five positions. But he's oddly been able to get some 20 point, 20, uh, top 20 finishes at this track. And uh, he's had some decent races this year. Nothing substantial or popular, great, but... He does have potential for a twenty point, a twenty top twenty finish. So if you can get him far enough back in the race, if he starts far enough back in the race, then he's got some potential here. Obviously, he does have tendency to crash out of races and stuff, but I think he's in a position if he gets a pretty far back start that he can really move up, move up into a top twenty to twenty five finish. Which again, you know, in scoring on NASCAR. Farther back you go, the more potential you have because you can maneuver up and get points for every position you've moved up. You know, starting at the like if you're Timmy Hill and you start at the front, you're almost unusable. You're literally unusable because you would literally have to win the race in order to actually even pay what what anybody else would pay off. So, uh, as for the last guy that I like here is uh, a guy that doesn't really run a ton of races, but Chris Hacker. Um, now, he doesn't have very good uh, finishes at all, really, but if he starts at the very back of the pack, he's had a few solid, you know, he's had some decent finishes. Now, he can get 10 or 15 points. You're looking at, you're looking at, you know, a 30-point fancy point max here. This is only if he starts at the extremely, like, if he's starting last, uh, because he's going to move up some because other people are wrecked around him, and he has a... Uh, you know, like I said, it's not he doesn't have a big track record, but he's not done terrible. And so I think he's somebody you can consider just because if you need to save the money so you can pay up for somebody else. But he's got to literally start in the back two or three positions. So that said, I mean, it's not the best check series uh, I, options, to be honest. Uh, there just wasn't a whole lot in the middle of the pack that really got me super excited about, you know, their history here. Uh, some people might mention Haley Deegan's been OK here. But she's had such a terrible season this year. Um, another guy that I thought about was Rajah Karuth. Uh, but uh, he does have some upside. But he's not really as ideal as uh, some of the others. But that said, you know, we have a couple drivers that really haven't even raced hardly at the truck series level. Like uh, Jake Garcia. He just doesn't have enough information. And also uh, 
uh, Justin Carroll, who he was an ARCA racer, but he's never even finished. He's never even qualified for truck race, despite trying several times. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, those guys, you know, you can't really rely too much on that kind of situation. With that said, I think it's a pretty decent slate overall, though. Uh, you should be able to mix and match some of the cheaper options in order to pay up for some of the guys that are near the front when, when it comes to qualifying and stuff. And you should be able to uh, hopefully get a quality win here. Uh, truck racing, unfortunately, I hate that I can't uh, do it after qualifying just because of the amount of time between qualifying and that. But you should have a good uh, potential here. So with that said, thank you guys for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and have a nice day, guys.